guys welcome back to the channel and today we have a video on a different subject not so much of a fragrance but an electronic a gaming device the ROG Ally Z1 so there's two versions I think of this uh, console there is the Z1 and then there's the Z1 Extreme I have the Z1 which is the base model so the price of these range around $499 and $699. A little bit of the on the cheaper end, as I've noticed, um, there are other consoles out there like the MSI. I forget what the name is, but I've seen that at $799, and that has a, an um, an i7 processor in it. So this one, just I'm gonna put the specification somewhere around here. That way we could make this video a little bit faster. But I just want to go over like my, what my experience is because. All these numbers and all this all these things they don't mean anything if you can't really play a game so I'm gonna base this review on the, the game Fallout 4 I've been playing it on Steam and I'm gonna go over some good and some bad so first let's go off with the good so the good is that on the console side I'm able to put everything on ultra and I'm able to play the game no problems but there's a couple of things, and I don't know if it's more of a console or an operating system um, fault. Uh, at first, the game was playing fine, no problems whatsoever, but sometimes the game will get kicked out and when you it will send you back to the Steam page and it will say stop and then it will say play, which means that the game has stopped playing. Now I've tried to play the game in different settings from medium to low to high quality or ultra and it doesn't really matter it still kicks me out of the game so that's not a really good thing but it is a good thing that you could play the game but the bad thing is that sometimes it kicks you out so again I don't know if this is an operating system or a console issue um, I don't know if I'll be able to, to replicate this because it happens sporadically so it doesn't happen very often but when it does it's, it's kind of annoying the one thing I have noticed is that it doesn't do it when you're connected to the power source. So when you have the console hooked up to the USB-C and playing off of power. Um, but on battery power, the console does limit you to its, to its highest settings on battery power, which I think is just turbo. And that's about it. And then they, they, you could play it fine off of battery, which is also a cool thing. The graphics don't suffer that much, which is another cool thing. And the gameplay doesn't suffer that much. The only thing is that you will notice some frame rates dropping a little bit. So another good thing is that you could play um, Xbox games on here with the Xbox uh, service. And you could also play with Steam and you could also download emulators here, which if you know what an emulator is, then I don't really have to explain much. But if you don't know, please go, uh, go ahead and search what an emulator is. You can just basically play retro games on the console. So good things. I think it is a, 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 a good console since I, have, I haven't really played my PlayStation 5 since I've owned this. And I've owned this for I think a month and a half now. So I've been playing it for quite a bit. And I've been playing nonstop Fallout 4, maybe for an hour, an hour or so, and I'll let you know why an hour or so here soon. Um, the build quality is also good on this, and overall, like the, the layout of this console is pretty good for your hands, and while you're playing, it feels really comfortable. The vents are out of the way. Um, Gameplay-wise, I already said it, it's really good. I've played Fallout 4, I've played um, Starfield, but Starfield, you really can't play it at Ultimate Set or yeah, you can't really play it at high quality settings. You have to play around with the settings to play, be able to play it normally uh, or play it in a good way that it doesn't really help or doesn't really hurt the gameplay. But I think it is worth the $399 that I basically play, paid for it. Now, I know I said $499, but I don't think at $499, I don't think this is really worth it. And now let's go to the to the bad. So what is the bad? The big bad about this console, it's the battery life. So playing the game, 
you would see the uh, the game the console throttle up depending on what games you're playing and sometimes within that throttling up the i've seen the game get kicked out of the console some uh, or get the game kicked out and you have to start all over from where you were sit last saved um another thing that i noticed that is really bad it's the screen so there's like a lot of fingerprint smudges because it is a touch screen so that's another bad thing about it and then the other bad thing is i basically took off the or turn off the led lights on the thumbs thumbsticks right here because that's something that i don't really need and i really don't want to hurt the battery life on this thing and i think the biggest uh, setback on this console it's the initial setup and i could see and that is my 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 that was my biggest um complaint when i had this that it even made me want to turn it back in or return it and the reason is basically when uh, you when you when you log into the console for the first time, it's gonna go through the whole motions of a Windows 11 computer, and I really don't like Windows 11. I don't like anything Windows. I'm really biased towards uh, Mac operating system. So it reminded me of of the old days when you have to go to go on YouTube and kind of figure out things uh, on how to set up the console. And I'll give you a prime example. Um, the interface to play so it has a my aces um, app that you have to download and it basically downloads all the drivers and all that i really didn't know that and on in the box it gives you some instructions but they're not really detailed um, and then you have the armored uh, crate that you also have to install in order to play some games now i don't know if you have to install that in order to play games but it was kind of like a hassle on how to play the games using that system and then the other thing was um, Steam, how to figure out Steam on how to use, use the console's buttons instead of using the, the inputs that Steam requires you to use. It's a little bit confusing. And it, uh, at first I wasn't able to like play the games how I wanted. And then I, again, YouTube is your best friend and I found out what to do and how to disable and enable the controller on the system. Another thing that was kind of like a problem was trying to play uh, Fallout Vegas um, or New Vegas. Uh, the game uh, was kicking me out all the time at the startup screen, and you know you have to go to YouTube and figure it out. So there's a lot of um, if you're not really tech savvy, like if you just buy this just to play on the go uh, computer games, you're gonna have a really really um, long time trying to figure out how to make this work for you. So it's not a out of it's not an out of the box experience that you can start playing. Um, maybe for some people it will be. Um, for me, it was a hassle trying to figure out how to work the system. And then the operating system again, touchscreen, right? So I basically had to use my keyboard for certain things because obviously using the keyboard on screen kind of sucks. So a lot of people that I know that use this console, they use it docked and docked. So what I've been using for a docking is this right here. So it has an HDMI um, right there plug and a USB-C power in. And basically you can just hook this up to the TV and play your console. So, but then that kind of takes away the fact that it's a portable console. So why are you gonna get a portable console if you have to hook it up to the TV and hook it up to an, out, uh, an, an additional power source and it kind of takes away the the actual like you know the, the 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 reason of why owning one of these things so overall uh i think it is a it is a good buy if you're willing to go through the pain of setting up the console and i wish there was a youtube channel i mean i could do it but i really don't want to that explains how to set this thing up from the get-go from like starting it up to setting it up and being able to play games the right way. Now, I haven't really tested any other consoles that are like this, like the MSI or the Steam Deck, but I know that I will be keeping this console because I really like the actual uh, gameplay. I actually like how it how it feels. I don't really mind the, the short battery life um, battery life I've had around a, a, an hour and 30 minutes of like continuous play 
until it gives me the 10% uh, warning. So if you're on an airplane and you're playing this console, you just know that you're gonna probably need to bring an uh, external power uh, source of some kind in order to extend your gameplay. So there you have it. This is my review of the ASUS ROG Ally Z1. Um, as I mentioned, this is not the Z1 Extreme. This is just the Z1, the, the base model, the 512 gigs. Um, overall, I do recommend if you're really going to buy this to just find a, a cheaper um, deal on this. I don't think it, it is worth the 499 asking price. I think 399 is where it should sit. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, please don't leave a dislike. Just go ahead on the comment section, and explain why you didn't like the video and what you want me to change in order for you to be able to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching again and have a nice day.